Hi, I'm Matt from SSW. Today I'm going to show you some of the ideas that we've got for improving engagement with the SSW Rewards mobile app. So we find that people use it a fair bit at the moment, but we think there's room for improvement and we can make it a lot better than it is now. Let's take a look. So by way of introduction, here's the status quo. So the situation at the moment is that very few people are actually installing the app, even at events when we tell them to scan a QR code to win prizes. And the thing is the app has very little value outside of conferences. At conferences, we get great engagement. People are running around scanning our QR codes, doing our challenges all the time, but outside of conferences, not so much. So if we take a look at some usage statistics here for iOS, we can see that it's used a couple of times a day. Obviously we can make that a lot better. For Android, the situation is a little bit worse. Yeah, one and a half to two times a day. So all in all, comparatively, this is... So the question is, how can we drive engagement to the SSW Rewards app? We've made some assumptions regarding this strategy uh, and these will become relevant later why we've made these assumptions, but they're important. Uh, so the first thing that we assume is that attendees will complete a task or an action for a shirt. This is based on uh, observation of behavior from, from decades of hosting events. We assume that we know what good developer behavior is, what they should know, what should they should do on GitHub, etc. Again, this will become relevant later, um, but it's important that we understand these assumptions. We also assume that we want to show off our mobile skills. SSW Rewards is our showcase app. It's our shop window to the world that says to everyone, hey, look what we can build. The scenarios that we want to cover with the app are big conferences, little user groups, our YouTube videos, and education via quizzes. We're gonna to switch to a remote first strategy. At the moment, it's very uh, in-person first. So current, it's in-person with remote as an afterthought. The future is gonna be that it will be remote first and in-person stuff will be a bonus on top of it. The goal is to add engagement for people's YouTube channels, not just ours. We might want to charge others to use this app if we can make the solution good enough. We want people to be able to add comments either to a live stream video or an event. We want them to be able to do that via the app and get points for doing so. And Adam should comment every week, e.g. question of the week during tech news. When we've got questions and quizzes in the app, he should be able to uh, broadcast that and publicize that during uh, all kinds of events. In this section, we're going to talk about social media. Now, there's going to be more on social media later, but this is the first social media piece I want to talk about. So first thing is we want people to be able to log in via their social identities. Um, this one is a relatively small change, very relatively easy to implement. So it's going to be first cab off the rank. We're prioritizing this quite high just because it's quick and easy to do and it, it delivers a lot of value for, for very little effort. So what do you think of this feature? Uh, let us know. You can scan this QR code or you can uh, go to that link which will be in the video and please vote and please comment on this video. The next thing I want to talk about is changes to the leaderboard. So at the moment, we've got a leaderboard in the app that shows people their positions. We're going to propose some changes to that. So the first thing that we want to do is add this week. Uh, so at the moment, when you go into the app, the app opens to the leaderboard by default. Uh, and you see this month, this year and all time, it defaults to, to, to this, this month. We're going to add this week and make it default to that. The goal of this is to make the leaderboard seem more achievable and more competitive. So someone who's never opened the app before uh, logs in, uses it, sees people with tens of thousands of points, sees hundreds of people on the leaderboard. It's demotivating and discouraging. We want people to genuinely believe that they're in with a chance, drive that gamification and encourage people to use the app. What do you think of this feature? You can go to this link here, which will be in the video, uh, or you can scan the QR code. Please vote and please comment and tell us what you think. In this section, I want to talk about prizes and giveaways. So we already have prizes and giveaways, and we're going to propose some changes to the way that we do these things. The first thing that we want to do is use notifications. Uh, and this is to really drive this feature home to people and make people aware of the reality of these prizes and giveaways that are in the app. So we're going to notify people whenever a prize draw is about to happen. Now, this can be a week. Uh, we've got a prize draw coming up in a week. It can be 10 minutes if we're at a conference, come to the SSW booth 
so on and so forth. Uh, we will also alert people when someone claims a reward. Now claiming a reward is from your points. So for example, an SSW Keep Cup, a Mi Band, so on and so forth. We'll, we'll send out a notification whenever anyone does this. And this is all about driving home that these things are real. It's not just a hypothetical something that you could possibly win. We really wanna make it real for people, that these are real things that real people are really getting. We will also send a notification whenever someone wins a prize. Now, prizes are bigger than rewards. Prizes are not things that can be claimed with points. They're, they're bigger things like a Stream Deck or a PlayStation, for example, on the occasions where we give such things away. More about that next. So we wanna have giveaways at every event. So we wanna make sure at every event we're giving away rewards. We're making them real, we're making them tangible. Um, so for example, the Mi Band, the Keep Cup, even our swag like t-shirts, we wanna make sure that people are getting these every event. You of course have to have the app to get these. We're not gonna let anyone have any swag without the app. And one thing we can do is make a little presentation out of it. So either before or after a user group or after the tech news, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to look in the admin portal for the app and we'll be able to see who is at that event. We'll be able to see how many points they've got and what rewards they're eligible for. And then we can start calling people out. Bob Northwind is here tonight. Bob, you've got 6,000 points. You can get a Mi Band. Come up and scan this and get it. We'll be able to do that every time. And again, this is making it real, making these things real for people, not just hypothetical. The other thing we want to do is give away a prize at every event. Now, I mentioned that prizes are bigger than rewards. They don't always have to be huge. So for example, on a regular cadence, like every month, we will give away at every user group a relatively small reward, a relatively small price, something maybe in the $20 to $100 range, probably at the lower end. And then more periodically, so less frequently, maybe once a quarter, we can work out the details, we'll give away a bigger price. So a bigger price might be somewhere in the region of a couple of hundred dollars. And then of course, once a year or however often we can have a major prize and that might be something bigger. The next thing that we wanna do is introduce uh, some filtering for who is eligible for prizes. So when we're gonna do a prize draw, um, rather than just draw from everyone that's in the app, we want to offer some filtering. So the first thing that we're gonna do is filter based on position on the leaderboard. So when we draw a winner in our prize draw, we might be able to specify, we want to be able to specify that to be eligible to be in this draw, you must be in the top 10 or top 50 or top 100 on the leaderboard this month, this year, all time, we'll add this week as well because that's relevant for making it more competitive and also for events like NDC, it'd be more relevant to do it this week. What do you think of this feature? Please let us know. You can go to this link, which will be in the video, or you can scan this QR code. Please vote on this feature and please comment and let us know your thoughts. The next thing that we want to introduce in terms of uh, filtering is based on achievements. So we may want to say, for example, to be eligible for a draw, you must have to have achieved something specific. So this might be you have to have scanned Adam's QR code, you have to have completed a specific quiz, you have to have watched a specific uh, talk. However we want to break it up, these, this is going to incentivize people to participate in specific things we want them to participate in. So we'll be able to filter based on who has completed these achievements and that will affect their eligibility to be in a draw, particularly relevant for major prizes or event related prizes. What do you think of this feature? Please let us know. You can use the link here, which will be in the video, uh, or you can scan the QR code. Please vote on the issue and please comment and let us know your thoughts. In this section, I want to talk about the UI. We have quite a nice UI in SSW Rewards at the moment, but it doesn't have wow factor. And there are some UI trends that we're seeing at the moment um, that our, our fantastic UX team are already developing some ideas for, and hopefully we'll be able to show you those as well. But we want to really show off our capability and we want our customers and our, our developer community to see what we can do. And at the moment, as nice as the SSW Rewards app is, it doesn't show that. It doesn't really show this next level advanced capability. So here are some design trends that we want to introduce. The first one is that we want the UI to be dynamic. At the moment, it's, it's largely static. We have a couple of animations. So for example, the ring, uh, when you go to a profile and the skills that animate in from the side, but we want to really make this more dynamic. Here's an example. 
If we look at this UI design here, this is not a real app, this is from Dribbble. We can see that rather than these things being static on the page, they animate. So UI elements slide in from the top and bottom, from the sides, things change color. And of course we've got the car animations at the top. So uh, this is, I, I guess, based somewhat on Duolingo, uh, but you can see that this is, this is all animated and it's dynamic rather than static. The next UI trend we want to talk about is transitions. At the moment, when we transition from one page to another, or we scroll within a page, it's all, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't have any wow factor. Here's an example of an app that's using advanced transitions. As you can see, as, as it scrolls, things move at different speeds. They bounce in and bounce out. As you transition between different parts of the app, different pages, they scroll in at different speeds. They, they don't all just scroll together. It gives it a sense of depth. There's also some parallax here. Uh, in the way that these different items appear and disappear. And again, this, this just gives it a little bit more uh, wow factor than we have now. The next UI trend that I want to talk about is parallax. I already mentioned this in the previous slide briefly. Parallax is when you have two things that give you a sense of distance by moving at different speeds. This is how we measure the distance to stars, for example, one of the, one of the methods at least. Um, so parallax is a, is a trend in uh, UI design at the moment that helps to give a sense of depth. So I showed one example, very subtle example. This is a much more robust example uh, that I want to show you here. So this is uh, from uh, uh, a Last of Us app design. You can see that as the screen moves and as the elements on the screen move, uh, the ones in the foreground move at a different speed to the ones in the background. So the background moves more slowly. And that really gives you a sense of depth, not just that things are moving together, but there's a real sense of depth in these things. That's a really cool effect. So what do you think of these UI changes? Uh, there's a link here that will be in the video description as well, or you can scan this QR code. Uh, please let us know what you think, vote for the issue and leave some comments. In this section, I want to talk about quizzes and the quizzes that we're gonna have in the app. This has been around for a while actually, we just haven't released it. So let's talk about it a little bit. So when it comes to an app, content is the main thing. Unless your app does something very specific and very useful, very productive, the only thing that's going to keep people coming back to the app is content. The content that we have is quizzes. So we have tech trivia. We had one tech trivia quiz uh, in the first version of the app. We took that out. We haven't had anything since. We have all of the functionality built. It's ready to go. We've got a full quiz engine. We haven't enabled it yet. So what we would like to do is release quizzes regularly on a regular cadence. Uh, and this is new content. Um, and it, it means that we'll have new content released regularly in the form of a new quiz uh, that's going to keep people coming back to the app to, to take that quiz and earn points and learn. Uh, we would do, in addition to a new quiz, we would have a question of the week. Uh, question of the week would likely be chewed into, uh, tied into our chewing the fat um, or our user group, depending on which week of the month it is. And of course, we can make that a condition of free lunch. If we want to, we can, we can add it to the requirements. You have to have done your sugar learning, your timesheets, and also you have to have had a go at answering the question of the week. Of course, you don't have to have got it right. You just have to have submitted an answer. Um, this feature is really relevant to our target demographic. And the reason is that the, the reason that our developer community follows SSW and engages with us at all is because we put our image out there of us being a great source of learning. So we've got a lot of uh, very knowledgeable developers that develop content on new technologies, new techniques all the time. And this is what appeals to our target demographic. They want to learn from us. And this gives them an opportunity to do so. This gives us a tool to help people learn from us. And this is the reason that our developer community follows SSW in the first place. So it's really, really relevant. It also helps us demonstrate our thought leadership. It helps us show off our skills and our capabilities by showing the depth and breadth of our knowledge in all kinds of different technical matters. We can also have a question or a quiz related to any specific rule or any group of rules. And we can tie that into SSW rules as well. And this is a really good feature for reinforcing learning. This is something that we might want to introduce as well. <clears throat> Some other content ideas that we've discussed and we're not doing, and, and the reason that the quizzes are so important to the app is because they're a relevant content uh, method and relevant content type that we can have. We've considered some other things that don't really work for this scenario. One is videos. So we have video content. We could release it exclusively via the app or early via the app. That's not going to work for a number of reasons. Potentially blog posts again, exclusively to the app or early via the app. 
again, not really something that we have content wise and, and not a good fit for the app for various reasons. Um, not recommended, as I mentioned. So what do you think of the quiz feature? Uh, please, uh, there's a link here that you can you can use. That will be in the video description. Uh, scan the QR code. Let us know. Please vote on this issue and please comment. Let us know your thoughts. In this next section, I want to talk about social media again. So we mentioned social media earlier. Uh, the simple uh, approach to social media integration is to let people log in with their existing social IDs. We want to take it a step further. We really want to give people points. Uh, so, you know, let's say someone's got 500 points. They share something on Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, GitHub. When they engage with us on social media, we want them to get points boosts for doing these things. So we want to integrate with these social platforms give people points for sharing our content, interacting with our content, engaging with SSW online. What do you think of this feature? Please let us know. You can follow this link. That will be in the video description. You can scan the QR code instead. Please vote on this issue. Comment, let us know your thoughts. In this section, uh, which I'm quite excited about, I want to talk about some recruitment features that we're going to introduce into the app. Um, so at the moment in the app, there's a menu that uh, says join SSW. When you click that, it takes you to the employment page on our website. That's fine. That's not very exciting though. What if we can do better? So what if instead, when you click join SSW, it generates something for us using all of the data that we have about you as an external user related to the app. So the first thing that it's going to do, is going to prepare an email report. This is all going to happen in the background. Now we know what events you've attended. Okay. So we've got that data. If you've been checking in, in the app, we know who you've met. Okay. We know what SSW is you've met. We know what social platforms you follow us on. We know what quizzes you've taken, how many, how many times it took you to complete that quiz, how long it took you to complete that quiz. We already have a wealth of information here about your capability, your technical capability. So what it will do is it will prepare that report and it will send it to Penny. Penny can then review that and she's got the full report, quizzes, attended events, who you've met, all that sort of stuff. And we can review that before we even take an, uh, uh, take an application to the next stage. Then within the app, once you submit your application, you'll be able to see how your application is progressing. So Penny will of course encourage people to apply via the app, you won't have to, but by doing so, you'll be able to view in real time how your application is progressing. We'll be able to encourage you to say, look, take some quizzes, you'll get some points, but also, you know, we'll review that when we review your application. So it's really worth your while. This is really gonna encourage people to engage with the app and really make that recruitment process more valuable to us because we'll have so much information here about a user. Now, as they're progressing through this process of applying uh, via the app, uh, we'll be able to integrate that with our Teams app that we already have that manages the bookings, manages the coding challenge and the comms challenge. So we'll be able to, automate a whole bunch of that stuff, but most importantly, get a wealth of really valuable application uh, information about an applicant before we even take that to the next step. What do you think of this feature? Please let us know. You can follow this link here, which will be in the video description. Alternatively, you can scan that QR code. Please vote on the issue and uh, please comment. Let us know your thoughts. In this next section here, I want to talk about a feature which uh, is, is kind of low priority because it's, it's, hard work, but is potentially valuable in certain situations. And that's custom leaderboards. So imagine this idea of arbitrary uh, leaderboards, which, which can be for an event. It can be for a rivalry between two people. This was really inspired by seeing how uh, uh, the CBA team at NDC were interacting with our app. When I saw them there last time, they were all really competing with each other and really competitive and really, you know, trying to, to beat each other for that top position. Um, so what if, for example, Bob Northwind can share a QR code from the app. Now at the moment, SSW people can share a QR code. What if everyone could, right? So you can use this to connect with people that you meet via SSW, but you can also use it to create a private leaderboard. So uh, his mate, Bill Westwind might come along and scan Bob Northwind's QR code. And now they've got a leaderboard that's just the two of them. Um, and you know, you can show what points, uh, what achievements, you know, Bill and Bob have, have done, how many points they've got, where they've sat. We can send a, a notification to Bill saying, you know, Bob is 500 points behind you. He's closing in. He's just uh, got this achievement. He's one thing away from beating you. Bob's taken the top spot. If there are more people on here, uh, you know, this might be uh, 20, 20 people at CBA, at NDC Sydney. They might want to set up their own leaderboard for that. We can set up a public leaderboard for NDC. And then you can have 
uh, a notification when someone's closing in on you, when, they, when they're surpassing you, if there's a, a large number of people, anytime someone takes the top spot. And this is really going to drive that gamification and really get people, uh, you know, really interested in, in working hard to get more points and getting on that leaderboard, getting high on that leaderboard. What do you think of this feature? Please let us know. You can follow this link here, which will be in the video description, and you can scan that QR code as well. Please vote on this issue. Leave some comments. Let us know what you think. The next thing that I want to talk about is coffee and meal orders. At the moment, um, it's quite low tech. When you come to an SSW event, we let people, depending on the event, sometimes there's food, sometimes there's coffees and coffee breaks. But what if you could order that via the app? So what if we could use those location services to, when you check in, we, we know that you're at SSW Sydney or SSW Brisbane, and we know that there's an Angular superpowers on that day. So what if, and, and you're booked, we know you're booked. What if you open the app and it says, hey, order your coffee, order your meal, and they can submit it via the app and that all then goes to the event master who can then take care of that. And then it just shows up at break time. What do you think of this feature? Please let us know. You can follow this link here, which has been in the video description. You can scan the QR code. Please vote on this issue and please comment and let us know your thoughts. I want to talk now in this section about what we can do before events to drive engagement with the app. Because at the moment, we're trying to <clears throat> scramble to get people to install the app when they arrive. We can probably help make that a bit smoother. So one, one thing I want to do to get people to install the app before they arrive uh, is include a download link in all of our comms. Now this would only be uh, B2C comms. This probably isn't appropriate for B2B communication, but in all of our B2C comms, we can uh, add a link to download the app. So here's an example of, of, of what these download links might look like. This is from something else, but we could include this in an email and this could be in an RSVP for an event, for example. This could be in our newsletter. Um, but the other thing that we can do is really promote the giveaways and prizes in those comms as well. So I mentioned uh, in uh, another section earlier about having major prizes every quarter or every year uh, and smaller prizes every month. Uh, you know, we, if we've got a prize draw coming up, we should put that in that comms as well. Say, install the app, download the app. And if we're saying there's criteria, make sure you've met Adam or make sure you've completed this achievement uh, and you'll be in the running to win this, this award, but you have to have the app. This is going to stop that mad scramble of trying to get people to install the app in a few seconds at the start of a presentation. In this section, I want to talk about some other things that we can do during events to help improve engagement with the app. The first thing I want to talk about is about making it remote first. I've mentioned this earlier in an earlier section, but what we're going to do is essentially have a QR code on every slide in a presentation for getting the points. Now, the reason is what we can do is we can encourage people to install the app, but we also then don't have to have this mad scramble of getting people to install the app within a specific space of time at the start of a talk or trying to scan the QR code to get the points in a narrow space of time at the end of a talk. By having a QR code every slide, it reinforces that message that there is an app, that there is a, it's a call to action. It tells people there's something to do to get points. What does this QR code do? Scan it, find out, get the points. It also has the benefit that as soon as one person does it during an event, people see people doing it. You know, no one wants to uh, mad, madly try and rush to scan a QR code at a specific time in a talk. But by seeing other people do it more sort of leisurely throughout the talk, it really encourage, encourages other people to follow suit. But what about in person? So in person, uh, we will give a bonus uh, set of points. So you get points for, for watching the app, everyone remotely, uh, whether it's on YouTube, uh, later, whether it's during a live stream, whether it's at an event, people will get points, but people that are there in person, and we can do this through location services, will get a points bonus for being there in person. So it's remote first. You don't just get the points for being there. You get the points for watching it. What you get for being there is a bonus. We want to add another feature during events, which is about attendees. So the idea is that when you're at an event, you can see who else is at this event. If it's uh, online and if it's live stream, you'll be able to see whether they're there in person or whether they're there remotely. And when you check into an event, which, which could potentially be online, could be in person, 
uh, you'll check in and, and again if you if you open up the app or use location services we'll detect that you're at SSW Melbourne we know that Will has a talk on that night during that time that you're there or close to that time so we can pop this up and say hey are you here for this and you can check in and you'll see that there's a little checkbox here that you can tick we'll make it tick by default and um, to say let other attendees see that you're here because they might not want to do that they might not want to appear on this list so they can uncheck it but they'll get 1.5 times points bonus for uh, sharing the fact with other attendees that they're there. It gives people the opportunity to network via our app as well. What do you think of this feature? What do you think of these remote first and these location based features? Please let us know. You can follow this link, which will be in the video description, or you can scan this QR code. Please vote on this issue. Leave some comments. Let us know what you think. In this section, I want to talk about the future of the app. I want to talk about some potential things that, that are uh, maybe on the backlog, maybe not on the backlog, but ideas that we're talking about and we're excited about things that we can put into the app in the future. Everything that I've shown you so far uh, is potentially within the next, next six to 12 months. These features are, are maybe more long term, maybe not, depending on uh, what, what you all think. So let's have a look. The first thing is 3D features. So in the current version of the app, we have a uh, SSW people section where you can swipe through and see two dimensional photos of people. But what if we had something like this? What if instead of a two dimensional picture of an SSW person, an SSW, it was a 3D model that you can tap and zoom in on and manipulate in, in real time in 3D like this. And this is something that we can potentially do with the new iPhones that have got LiDAR on them. Instead of just doing a picture, we can take a 3D scan. We can put those in the app. What if as well as that, we could take it a step further. Now, let's say you're interested in uh, you work at this company here, which is obviously a cool modern tech company because they've got a uh, ping pong table in their office. But let's say, you know, you're looking at the app and you, you see Kiki and you want to book Kiki. You can use AR to put uh, an AR 3D model of Kiki in your office. How cool would that be? And this is all stuff we can do with the app right now with, with technology that's available to us right now. Obviously is a little bit more hard work to do, but the payoff is potentially very cool. More um, AR features we could do, think about spatial anchoring. So think about conferences. We can use spatial anchors to help people find us. It, the original concept for the app with this, was this Pokemon Go type idea where you would got to catch them all and you've got to find all the SSW as an NDC and scan them. Well, we could use location services. We could use uh, spatial anchors uh, to, to put things specifically at specific locations in a conference, whether it's a person, whether it's a QR code, uh, it, you know, whether it's an AR thing that you can only see if you've got the app installed. But these are all things that we could do to, again, make it cool, make people want to use it. We could also have a feature outside the app, which we could uh, allow other people to engage with as well, which is geocaching. So we could we could let people put their own QR codes or their own uh, their own secret stashes in secret locations and have people have them share that with other users of the app and have people track them down and get points for finding them. Now in this section, I just want to wrap up some of the thoughts. I've spoken about a few different things about the app uh, and I've shown you through a few different sections, some of the things that we're going to build, some of the things that we want to build. Uh, and to summarize the key points, to get it right, to, to, to make this app awesome, which is what we want to do, it requires designer effort, it requires developer effort, but it will be worth it. It could be awesome. It could be a really, really awesome app. It could showcase our capability. It could wow our clients and our developer community with the functionality and with the, the look and feel and the cool UX tricks. And it will be fun for us to work on. This will be a lot of these features will be really fun for us to sink our teeth in and, and it will encourage more people to want to work on the SSW Rewards app. So the next steps to get Adam's approval, which is actually already done. Uh, Adam has, has seen this and has approved basically everything in here in the uh, in the priority order that I've shown you. Uh, the top priority features are the features that we're uh, going to include for NDC Sydney 2024. So those are really the, the, the first things that, that we saw, the first sections that we saw. Uh, the next step is to do a spec review, uh, which would include one designer and two developers. This is actually already underway. Um, there is a draft of this, but this is really going to give us a better idea of precisely what effort is involved, precisely what PBIs are required, and what the opportunity cost is for us to build this. We need to develop some personas because we want to have some, some proper uh, UX uh, user journeys uh, for, and some user journey maps for this app. We want to really make sure that we get it right and nail our target demographic. 
with that information, we want to develop a product roadmap. And this is something that we can make public and you know, really give people inside and outside of SSW the opportunity to see where this app is going and what it is that we want to build. Thank you.